Now, I think you all know what GIGO means, garbage in, garbage out. The quality of simulation project results is the quality of the input data or the quality of the model, whichever is lower. Invalid simulation models, which get that way due to inadequate or undone verification and validation, and those are topics of another webinar, into which correct data have been input, likely at significant cost of money and time, can produce disastrously bad results. These incorrect, invalid results are too often accompanied by overconfidence in them. So looking at the input data issues, the five bullets on this slide all stem from actual misunderstandings I've seen in 35 years simulation experience. In the first bullet point, for example, the modeler and the client need to have a shop talk concerning how many work days are in a month, Saturdays included, Saturday morning half days included, were there any holidays, did a work day disappear due to a severe snowstorm? Have the numbers of tool changes per day been gradually increasing as production ramps up and or the machines were out? Have the number of tool changes per day been gradually decreasing as newly hired workers develop expertise in adjusting and running the machines? In the last bullet point, how many parts fit on a pallet? Are all the pallets the same size or capacity? Are all the parts the same size? Are three or four extra pal parts put on the pallet now and then, even if they teeter? Or you see lots of questions behind the simple. Well, if not, if you don't have the most immediately pertinent input data, what do we do about it? The first bullet point is clearly the best. Maybe. First, it has to be possible, meaning the exact needed data have to exist, and sufficient time and money have to be available to get those data. Approximation often called extrapolation, is frequently necessary. For example, recall the second bullet of the previous slide. We need cycle time of machine X, but we have the cycle time of a similar machine Y. The cycle times, both mean and standard deviation, might reasonably be assumed equal if the two machines were built or purchased to the same model and specifications. That documentation, that assumption must be documented in writing for later examination and possible challenge and or revision. In the third bullet, here it is, we have a situation where we might assume, or at least hope, that the data analysis, the data have become more favorable. The sensitivity analysis involves running the model first with 5% downtime, then 2% downtime. Not much difference in output? Okay, the amount of downtime is not a crucial factor. Big difference in output? Tell the salesperson so. That's the salesperson of the new equipment, and say, Certainly, we need to insert a penalty clause in the contract of purchase, providing for damages if your downtime claim is over-optimistic. I've seen that more than once. Salesperson A said, certainly. Our company torture tested the new machine design, and we're confident of our claim. Salesperson B Oh, I, I, well, I, I, I need to talk with the lawyer. Well, we still don't have the exact data, but we sure got a good information 
on the different confidence levels between salesperson A and salesperson B. Well, now we get a little worse. What if we have no data at all? Very possibly, especially if the new system exists only in design on paper. Indeed, that's the most potentially high ROI, return on investment, time to do simulation. Sensitivity analysis, using estimates and experience from previous systems, will serve well. Ask an expert familiar with the context for minimum, most likely, and maximum values of repair time, cycle time, service time, and then use one of these distributions suggested, uniform, triangular, beta, there's others, we're about to show graphs to model such a situation. Now there's a typical graph from a simulation software generating uniform data. Randomly distributed, everything in the interval is equally likely. Everything outside the interval is impossible. So this distribution is a very crude representation of data. Now here's a triangular distribution. When it was specified, the most probable value was 0 0.3. Values can range from 0 to 1, never outside. And those three parameters, minimum, mode, that's the 0 0.3, and maximum, control the shape of this distribution. The most probable value can be any value between or including the minimum and maximum. So this distribution has more flexibility than is possible with the uniform distribution. Now here's a distribution, beta, more adjustable than either the uniform or the triangular, depending on the values of its two parameters, alpha 1 and alpha 2. The mode can be anywhere in the open interval. The distribution is still closed on both ends. You can't go outside the minimum, maximum specified. So values less than 0 or greater than 1 are still impossible. The beta, like the uniform and the triangular, can be scaled to any range, such as, for example, 5 minutes to 20 minutes. And the beta is often preferred over the triangular because the beta can have thinner tails. In other words, extreme values are less likely. Many statisticians and analysts feel that in a triangular, values near the endpoints are too likely to occur. So the beta in recent years has often been preferred. Now, looking beyond the distributions, what statistical questions do we ask of the input data? Here's four key items. Q links, for example, are typically autocorrelated. If the Q was long at 10 o'clock, it was probably long at 10 minutes after 10 o'clock and vice versa. Therefore, with reference to both the first two bullet points, when data collected over time are sorted, let's say from maximum to minimum, out of position, and that can easily happen in an Excel workbook, always keep one copy of the original time-stamped, time-ordered data safely tucked away. For example, workers on the night shift may be less experienced and do certain tasks more slowly than workers on the day shift. An occasional service or repair time may be very long, needing a long skinny tail, even if an unusually long value was not observed during the period over which 
data were originally collected. Furthermore, successive observations may not be IID. That's our nickname for independent, identically distributed. For example, worker fatigue may gradually lengthen cycle times, or worker acclimatization may gradually shorten them. Now here's a vivid example of a hidden correlation, as opposed even to autocorrelation, which appeared in data for a model I helped build of a drive-through oil change shop. The times to drain the transmission fluid and the times to drain the engine oil were not independent. They were positively correlated. Larger, bigger model vehicles have more of both fluids. So if one of the drainage times was long, the other drainage time was likely long, and vice versa. Now, having done all this work, the analyst still has to decide how to describe the input data to the simulation model. There's two main choices use it directly as an empirical distribution or fit a statistical distribution. And there's three methods on, this bullet, on these bullet points of how that might be done. Number two is often preferable to number one since more statistical analyses become possible. But, major but, only if a good fitting closed form distribution can be found. And that's where the three tests come in. They can assess the quality of goodness of fit. Now, your data set, you made this histogram of it, like the example histogram shown. Your data set may be bimodal. That means it has two humps. Now, if it's bimodal, I guarantee that no standard statistical distribution will fit well. And if it's bimodal, look for a way to subdivide it. Now here's a common example. You collect data on repair times of a machine when it has failed. And those repair times may very well be bimodal. There may be quite a lot of relatively short repair times that's when the machine jammed. And there may be a few much longer repair times, making a smaller hump farther to the right. Those were caused by a motor malfunction, which needs a lot longer to fix. So subdivide the data set into two different types of repair times, types of failures. 90% of the failures are one, 10% of the failures are the other, and then separately try a statistical distribution fit by these methods. Now, how shall we run the model? And the answer is not, we just click the mouse or press the button. First, is the system being modeled, and hence the model terminating or steady state? A simulation model normally starts out empty and idle. If the real system does also, for example, a bank opens at 9 and closes at 4.30, the model is terminating. If the system runs without emptying out, like a factory from one day to the next, or a hospital emergency room, or a telephone exchange, the system is steady state. A terminating system uses zero warm-up time. Easy choice. A steady state system needs warm-up time until the model ramps up from empty and idle to typical conditions. This warm-up time might be shortened by introducing some entities into the system at time zero. Then it doesn't start out completely empty. So what will this warm-up time need to be? A careful examination can help determine the warm-up time. 
also, you need more than one replication, always. A simulation run is an experiment with randomly generated data. So multiple replications are needed, usually in practice between 5 and 50 replications. Depending on the level of variability in the system and the narrowness of confidence intervals desired for key system performance metrics. If the confidence level needed for decision making is higher, make more replications. If the variability within the system is higher, make more replications. And those decisions depend partly upon what sort of inference the decision maker will need. It might be qualitative. Quantitative results require more accuracy of data and more replications than qualitative or comparative results. And an example of a qualitative or a quantitative desired output is given here. The client may wish, for example, to compare eight systems and know which are the best two, and perhaps in first, second order. Or for narrowing choices, the client may first wish to be told that a subset of three of the eight systems is guaranteed to contain the best of the eight. Then the other five can be put aside and further analysis can be done on the three systems to see which one of the three, as opposed to searching among eight, is the best system. And all of these within a specified confidence level. 